everyone. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a number sense routine that you can take and use in your K through two classroom right away. This is actually video number two of a four part series. And in the last video, it looks like this. I shared all about circle counting and I shared some ideas and techniques that you can use with your young students. In today's video, we are going to talk all about quick images. I'm gonna run through how to use quick images, some ways to differentiate it, when I like to use them in my classroom, and then most importantly, I'm going to talk about that teacher talk. What we can do, what we can say, and how we can facilitate this to bring the most out of our students. If you've watched my videos before, then welcome back. And if not, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, activities, and games with teachers just like you. So while you're here, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Okay, so how to play quick images. This is perfect for getting students to practice subitizing or identifying a group of numbers without actually having to count them up. It also is great for getting students to recognize different groups in order to start beginning addition and beginning subtraction, and also just decomposing numbers, recognizing that seven can be made by four and three, six and one, five and two, etc. Quick images is usually done with dot cards, so basically a series of dots that look similar to this. Here you can see six different dots and it's set up in a distinct pattern. Now it can also be done, quick images can be done with other things that I will explain in the differentiation piece, but the way quick images is done is you will explain to students that you are going to show them a card with a number. It's going to have some dots on it and you want them to determine how many dots they see. So that's the goal. How many dots are there? But it's called quick images because you're not just going to hold it up for students to count. In fact, we want to get them used to subitizing and grouping those numbers and dots that they see. So you're just gonna hold it up, maybe count to three, and then put it away. When I do this the first time with my students, I don't give much direction other than that. I say, I'm going to hold up a card for three seconds, and then I put it down. And then I simply ask students, how many dots did you see? As their hands start flying up, this is where the important part of the process comes in. This activity is as much, if not more, about the process and how students recognized how many dots there are than if they actually got the correct number. So this discussion is very important. Some of your students might say they saw six because they saw four over here and two over here. And so four plus two more equals six. When they say something like this, you want to ask, okay, how did you know there was four? And students might be wondering, well, I don't know, I just saw four. And they might say that they've recognized four dots like this before, they've seen it on a dice, or they've known, they just know that four things is four. They didn't have to count it up, one, two, three, four. Another student might say, oh, well, I saw two on top and two on the bottom, two plus two equals four. And then there's another two, so two plus two plus two equals four. And of course, you may have a student that did just quickly count them up. They counted up one, two, three, four, saw the other two. Maybe they didn't have to count those ones. And as you can see, there are many different ways that students might explain how they actually got the number six. In fact, even if all your students got six right away, you don't just wanna go ahead and give them a nice little pat on the back. You really want them to express and explain how they got that answer and even make connections to another student. So if another student says, oh, I saw four and two, and that's how another student saw it, they can connect on that and say, that's exactly what I saw. And then another student might express a different way. Now, as the teacher, you may have to kind of pull this out of them a little bit at first. You might share, after someone shares one example, you might go ahead and say, oh, interesting, you saw that four first. What I saw when I looked at it is first I saw the two over here. I saw one on top of each other. I knew right away that was two. I didn't have to count it. And then I saw a group of four and I know that two plus four equals six. You'll wanna do a lot of thinking aloud during this time. Now remember when we're talking about number sense routines, remember that it is a routine you'll want to build into your math block in some way. So you're not just gonna to wanna to pull these out and it's a one-time activity. You'll want to keep building upon them as the year goes on. So as students progress, you are going to show them all different cards with different types of patterns and different ways to go ahead and express how they 
they found that number. Students might be able to look at some of these cards and just say they recognized it from a dice and they know that this is a five. Again, they might say two, one, two. Maybe they saw two this way. You'll want them to come up to the board if they can and really kind of circle and show you and explain to you how they solved it. All right, now that you understand the gist of how to use the activity quick images, let me give you some ways to differentiate. If your students are having trouble grouping the items, particularly kindergarten or beginning of the year first grade students, if they're having trouble grouping and they're still really stuck on counting, what you can do is you can make a card that looks like this. This one is probably hard to see, but these four are actually gray. If you had them in color, you could have two different colors here, but these are gray and these are black. And this card is similar to the very first one I showed you, but it just allows students to very quickly see that this group Group is separate and different from this group. When you add in the two separate colors, it allows students to very quickly subitize and see, okay, four and two. Another easy way you can do this is by using pictures of dominoes. You can actually just use regular dominoes too if you want to put them under a projector to make them larger, but the domino with the line down the middle already has the two groups separated, and this allows them to see the four and the one, and very quickly they can see four plus one equals five, and always I like to show them in different orientations. So if you're used to showing the cards or the dominoes side by side, make sure you also give students opportunities to see them on top of one another as well. Another way to differentiate and continue to add on and progress through these quick image cards is to use 10 frames. Now again, you can show them this way or this way, but here students are used to quickly looking at that 10 frame and they can see the five filled in and the three on the bottom. They might decide to pair them up this way and see six and two. However they describe that to you is completely fine and accurate, but this is another great way way for them to see these numbers set up in different ways. Once we do a few 10 frames with numbers less than 10, I definitely move quickly on to those teen numbers where students are quickly able to see the 10 and the three, which is a great way once we get into place value in first grade, they need to recognize 13 as a 10 and a three. And using these quick image cards is a great way to kind of warm their brains up to get ready for that. As far as when to use quick images in your classroom, the answer for most of these number sense routines is going to be morning meeting as a math warm up or anytime you have a quick little time filler. The whole point of all of these number sense routines is that they are quick and effective. No matter when you do these, you will wanna make sure you have enough time for students to express their process in solving each of the problems though. But because again, you're only really doing three, maybe four images at a time, you can really plug it in anywhere. What I would mostly do is be purposeful of what type of quick image card I show before my math warm up or before my lesson. Like I mentioned, earlier, if you are starting to teach a unit on place value with teen numbers, you might want to do some quick images with the 10 and the 3. If you're teaching different addition strategies and one of them is making 10, you might want to purposefully choose some quick images that look like this. Here the 10 frame is not filled up, it only has 9, and when you ask your students what they see, you'll probably get 9 and 2, but you might get, and even if you don't get this, you will want to elicit this afterwards, you'll want to give this up as a solution, where students could take one from here to fill up the 10 frame and see 10 and 1. So notice how I said if students don't give you that answer first, you'll definitely want to listen to their process. But then, like this example, if you're choosing to do this as a warm up, you will want to offer that so in the future students might see other problems like this and know a quick and easy solution is to quickly make that 10 and then see what's left over. That way if you're doing this as a warm up and then you go into your lesson where students are using manipulatives, they've at least had some sort of understanding and some exposure to this type of problem first. Now as far as teacher talk goes, I've already made it pretty clear that it's important for you to ask students to explain their thinking and don't just stop at one student. If one student says they see four and two and that's six and a bunch of them nod their head, kind of keep pushing on to see if students can give you another answer. Say, okay, well, if that's the way you saw it first, 
Is there another way you could have solved this? Another powerful strategy is to actually write down and record student responses for how they got their answer. So if you go ahead and show a quick image card and let's say Bob in your classroom, Bob is expressing his process. He's saying, oh, I saw a group of five over here and a group of four and I know five plus four equals nine. You could go ahead and write that down, five plus four equals nine. You might even, if this is on a uh, projector where you can kind of draw over it and then erase, you could draw that and write down Bob's strategy. Now, if you ask another student, they might say, oh, I saw a group of four, another group of four, and then one more, four plus four plus one equals nine. And you would write that student's name next to their thinking. That gives them a lot of ownership over the actual process that's happening. And I often find that students are more willing to actually express their process and want to share when they get the credit of their name being written down. The last thing you'll want to do is go ahead and name the strategy students are using, even if they don't know the name of of it. Like that example where students are borrowing the one to make 10, they might not express it that way, but as they do that, you'll want to purposefully and like thoughtfully, you'll want to say, ah, oh, Bob, I love the way you use that strategy to make 10 and then add on what was left. When you go ahead and name the strategies for students, it allows them to more quickly think of that strategy the next time they solve a similar problem. All of the quick image cards I've showed in this video so far, the 10 frame ones, the dots, the dominoes, I'm gonna go ahead and upload those to the SJT Math Club. So if you are a member, be on the lookout for those this coming July. I will go ahead and send an email when those are uploaded. And if you want to know more about the SJT Math Club because it's opening soon, hint, hint, I'll go ahead and leave a link to the waitlist down in the description. So just put your email in there if you want to know when the club opens and more details about it. So that was number sense routine number two. Remember my first video was circle counting and today's video is all about quick images. As you can see, these are really fast routines that you can implement in your classroom right away when you get back to that classroom next fall. If you think you can use this idea with your students, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up or let me know down in the comments. I love reading the comments I get from you guys. So write it down there and I'll be sure to read it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week with another quick number sense routine. Bye guys.